So let's bring all of this together into, into one single way of thinking about how we build platforms. Essentially what we talked about so far was platforms are interactions enabled by infrastructure. You start by figuring out what your interaction looks like, design the interaction, and use that to design the infrastructure that will enable this interaction. So let's start with the interaction. What a platform does is, is it acts as an infrastructure for value to be created on top. So for that to happen, you need a producer, you need certain kind of value to be created. I, I, I defined what the taxonomy of value is to, to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, uh, remove the confusion around that, but there's the producer that comes in, there's the, the value that needs to be created on top of the platform, and there's finally the, the idea of the consumer coming on the platform. Let's start with these three building blocks as the first three building blocks of what an interaction looks like. Once we know who the producer is, what is what value is being created, we know that there needs to be a platform under it and it needs to offer certain kinds of tools and services to enable this interaction to happen. At this point, we also need to balance the conflicting priorities of open participation with curation and governance. And that's why we need to define two things. A, what are the channels by which the producer accesses the platform and how are we putting in access control on those channels? B, what are the channels by which consumers access the platform and how are we putting in filters on those various channels and how do those filters scale over time? In a similar manner, how does access control scale over time? Because it's, if it's only manual, how do you ensure that it scales at the rate of the ecosystem? Essentially, what happens on the platform is things moving from the producer into the platform through this model of access control and then things being filtered out going to the consumer. To do this, the platform needs to do three things in, in particular. It needs to provide tools and services for creation. I talk about tools and services because very often we focus just on the technology part of it, but there also need to be enabling services of various kinds to ensure that producers create and create often. They need to be tools and services of consumption, and they need to be tools and services of curation so that the platform scales its ability to decide what is good quality and what is not. This lays out how value is created on the platform, but for this to be repeated, for the feedback loop to happen, you need to have a way of communicating currency back to the producer from the consumer. But all of this is great if you're running a charity. If you're really running a business, you need to have value capture at the end of it. This is a really interesting point because value capture traditionally has only me meant dollar capture. On platforms, value capture can mean data capture because data does very interesting things. If you are a 100-year-old company building a platform, you could be using that data to sell more of what your pipe sells. If you're the platform and you're not making money on a particular interaction, you could be capturing data from that interaction that can be used to strengthen the filter for another interaction where you actually sell something. So, the way to think about capture is to ensure that in every interaction you're either capturing dollar or you're capturing data. Because it's very simple to say that we, we want to be free and we want to create a huge user base until that point we don't really care about how we're monetizing. It's fine not to monetize on day one, but you need to know what data you're capturing that can later be converted to dollars. And that's a really important point about the capture part over here. 